What's up guys, thank you so much for clicking on the video. I have a Lich Knight build for you here today, and it is a lot of fun. It is gonna mix ice with fire with bleed, and it's just gonna be overall a great build for you. So let me tell you how this build is going to work. You're going to be building up frostbite damage, and the second your frostbite gets on the target, you're then going to switch to your alternate weapon, get a flame ash of war off on the target, and it's going to take your frostbite away, and then you're going to repeat that process so you can get as many frostbite procs on your enemy as possible. We are gonna be using a strength intelligence build to do this and we are going to be using two morning star hammers so let's get right into how this build is going to play and the talismans you need as well as your flask and of course how our weapons are going to tie into this so here we go we're going to start with two morning star hammers this is a new game plus build you can do this with one hammer and another frost weapon if you decide to do that on your first playthrough but this is a new game plus build because i do not believe you can get two morning stars on your first playthrough the reason that i chose the morning star is because it also has blood loss on it and although you're not going to have any arcane put into this build unless you decide to put it in yourself you aren't going to be getting crazy blood procs but it is nice that they can happen while you're getting your frostbite build up to go off as well we'll talk about hoarfrost stomp in just a second but for right now the attack power of this weapon is going to be a physical attack power of 199 plus 140 and there's also going to be a magic attack power of 178 plus 92 the attribute scaling for this weapon is strength intellect and dexterity all have a c scaling and then your attributes needed for this weapon are going to be 12 strength and 8 dexterity. To find this weapon, you're going to ride down to the broken down carriage in Weeping Peninsula right after the Bridge of Sacrifice, and it will be in the back of the carriage waiting for you. So let's talk about the Horfrost Stomp Ash of War, because this is what makes our Morningstar a frost weapon. The reason I chose this is because the Morningstar has very little range on it, much like the dagger build I put out not too long ago. This also requires you to be very, very close to your enemies, and it is a high risk, high reward build. Horfrost Stomp allows us to close that gap quickly by putting out the Horfrost Stomp Ash of War, staggering our enemy, then jumping into the fray and starting to hit them while they're staggered to continually stagger them with our Morning Stars. I found that this playstyle goes very, very well, not only to spam Horfrost Stomp if you need to when there's multiple enemies in the area, but also when you need help building up your Frostbite damage when you're not hitting the target directly. If you want to snag this Ash of War for yourself, you're going to go to the Carrion Manor at the main Carrion Manor gate, and you're going to run to the right into a pond there is going to be an invisible scarab where all you can see is his footprints. Kill that scarab and he's going to drop for you the Horfrost Stomp Ash of War. Now for your second weapon that has the Flame Ash of War on it, it honestly does not matter what Ash of War you're using or what weapon it is as long as it is fire so it can negate the Frostbite buildup so you can start building Frostbite up over and over again. So for me, I have the Bloodstained Dagger with Flaming Strike on it and it just allows me to get that fire off really quickly so I can switch back to my Morning Star and start building up that Frostbite again. Like I said, doesn't matter which weapon you use here as long as you have a fire ash of war. So let's move into our talismans. The first talisman we're going to be using is the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and this might seem a little bit odd with a more of a strength type of build, but because you're hitting in rapid succession with your Morning Stars, this is going to allow you to get the attack power boost that the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia provides. The Rotten Wing Sword Insignia is going to give you an attack power boost 6%, 8%, and then 13%, depending on how often you're hitting your enemy. And because we have to be very close with this build and we are continually striking, this is going to allow us to get pretty much much that 13% attack power boost right away. And for our talisman number two, we're going to be using the Warrior Jar Shard. Now, why am I not using the Shard of Alexander for this? Well, it is because I actually don't have it on this character, so I went ahead and got the Warrior Jar Shard so I could show you something you could use without the Shard of Alexander if you don't have it. But obviously, you do want the Shard of Alexander here if you're going to place a talisman here because that will give you a plus 15% boost instead of the plus 10% boost to your skills that the Warrior Jar Shard does. We're using this because we want to get the most damage out of our Horfrost Stomp, so we can close in on the enemy after they're staggered and hit them with the Morning Stars. Moving into Talisman number three, we're going to be using the Ancestral Spirit's Horn. This is going to restore three FP upon defeating enemies, and the reason that we have this one equipped is because every single time we defeat an enemy, we're going to get that FP back, which is going to help us use more Horfrost Stomps. I typically don't run a ton of Cerulean Tear Flasks, so having the Ancestral Spirit Horn's Talisman is going to really give us that FP that we need so we can stay out for longer and not rest at grace sites. And finally, with our number four talisman, we're going to be using the Claw Talisman. I prefer using the Claw Talisman because I love jump attacks. I think they do a lot of damage, especially with the dual Morning Stars. You're going to be building up your Frost procs and your Blood procs, so it's overall going to work out really, really well for you, and you're going to get some very decent damage. If you want to min-max this build even more, instead of using the chest piece that we have, you can use the Raptor's Black Feathers to get that increased 10% damage to your jump attacks, but in my testing of this build, I found that I actually needed a lot more poise because of the short range 
damage of these morning stars and how I would be taking more damage. But if you want to use that, you are more than welcome to try that on to get you some more damage. So we are using the claw talisman. It's going to give us a 10% damage increase to our jump attacks. If you are using the raptor's feathers, that's going to be a total of 20% damage to your jump attacks. So maybe try that one out as well. As far as the armor goes, we're going to be using the great helm for our headpiece, the Hoslo's armor, all knowing gauntlets, and the beast champion greaves. All of this set is going to give you 56 poise. I found this was way better, like I said earlier, than the raptor's feathers because I just didn't have enough poise. I kept getting knocked out of my attacks. I would never be able to get hoarfrost stomp off, all that kind of stuff. So having more poise for this build definitely helped out a lot. And this build looks really, really great as well and kind of goes with the aesthetic of the Lich Knight. And finally, we have the Flask of Wondrous Physics. So in your flask, you're going to want to put the Intelligence Knot Crystal Tier and the Strength Knot Crystal Tier because both of those are going to boost your intelligence and strength immensely, which is only going to add to us getting more damage out of this build. The Intelligence Knot Crystal Tier is going to be found just south of the Carrion Manor on a stone basin, and it's going to boost your intelligence by 10. The Strength Knot Crystal Tier is also going to give you a plus 10 boost to your strength, and it's going to be found to the northeast of the Stormhill Shack on top of a cliffside. Now, finally, guys, here at the end of the video, I do want to show you the stats that I'm currently working with. Like I said, it is going to be a strength intelligence build, so I have Vigor at 40, Mind at 20, Endurance at 30, Strength at 60, Dexterity at 21, and Intelligence at 40, with no Faith and no Arcane on this build. I find that having more points delegated to Strength over Intelligence in this build just allows you to do more damage overall, but also your weapon does scale with Intelligence, so you're going to get a decent amount of damage from your Intelligence scaling there also. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. If you're going to be using this build to level in the game, I would highly suggest that you pour a lot into Strength at first, and then start building your Intelligence up once you start getting Strength around 40 or 50, and then after that, putting everything else into Endurance and Vigor and so on and so forth, depending on what you need. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. I do appreciate it. We are going to have more Elden Ring content coming out every single day and long form videos coming out twice a week. So if that interests you, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you can know when I'm making more content. I appreciate you guys immensely. And until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.